And now I'd like to welcome to the screen, Jeff Widdick, Chief Product Officer at Ampere Computing to share how Ampere has dramatically transformed computing from hyperscale data centers to cloud native processing at the edge in only four years. Thanks, Jim. Uh, great to be here. Excited to talk. So to set the scene for those who aren't aware of Ampere's journey, uh, in 2017, former Intel executive Renee James founded Ampere and set out a vision to deliver a new standard for cloud and edge servers. And within the first year, the California-based startup brought its first ARM-based chip to market. And since then, the company's grown to 400 employees with facilities in four countries. And you've secured some of the biggest cloud customers, such as Microsoft and Oracle. Jeff, can you share more about Ampere's journey to success and, and indeed why you decided to join the company in 2019? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as you, as you noted, it's been a, a pretty wild ride here for the last couple of years. Uh, we are almost four years old. Uh, as you mentioned, Renee James, a uh, former executive from Intel, uh, started Ampere back in, in 2017 uh, with the goal to create what's next in, in computing and specifically what's next for cloud computing. Uh, so very, very exciting space. Uh, I think that uh, if you look back a couple of years ago, uh, we probably couldn't have predicted kind of how exciting this space has actually gotten. Uh, a lot of the key challenges, a lot of the key opportunities that have, that have come about uh, in that time, cloud computing has only become more important in our lives uh, over the last year or so. And as you mentioned, uh, those cloud computing companies are looking for alternatives to what they have today. They're looking for higher performance. They're looking for more power efficient solutions. They're looking for more scalable solutions. And Ampere was able to, to come in uh, and provide those solutions for them. And as you noted, we have a, a couple of very key large wins with, uh, with large cloud service providers. And we're very, very pleased with uh, the journey that uh, you know, that we, what we've accomplished over the last three and a half, almost four years uh, from a company perspective and from a, a product and market perspective. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredibly impressive performance in just four years. So I'm sure many young companies joining us today would be interested to know how as a company you've been able to stay focused and achieve those goals within that really quite short time frame. That's super important. Being very, very focused and knowing why you exist as, uh, as a company, as a startup, uh, is, is really critical to making sure that you stay, uh, just stay on point and you stay aimed at, uh, you know, at your key objectives. So I think that's, that's first and foremost is knowing why you exist. Uh, what is your overall mission statement? What are you trying to accomplish? The tactics can change. Uh, you have to adapt as time goes on, uh, but hopefully you stay true to that core objective that you have. A, a lot of that is also about knowing what you're not doing. So it's not just about what you've chosen to do, but also being very clear about the things that you've chosen not to do. Uh, for example, at Ampere, uh, we are focused on uh, the cloud. Uh, we've built a product that's exceptionally well optimized for uh, cloud architectures and running on clouds of all types. Uh, but we also have to be very cognizant of the things that we aren't building our product for. And it can be tempting at times when new opportunities come in, sales opportunities come in, customers want uh, to go into a different space, uh, being very, very clear about what it is that you do well and what it is that you intentionally don't do well uh, is very, very important. Otherwise, it can be easy to become distracted, product requirements drift, uh, your product suddenly doesn't achieve the, uh, the original objectives, company focus shifts, uh, sales focus shifts. So, so being very, very clear about um, what you are aiming to do and what you're aiming to not do, uh, I think is, is really, really important for uh, a young company, uh, especially for startups to stay focused on their key objectives. Yeah, actually, I think even at all stages, the decisions not to do something are some of the most important you ever make. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, I've certainly learned in my career that some of the most significant moments of opportunity are found in the times of the greatest challenges. So has that been true for you? And what have been some of the biggest challenges at Ampere? And how did you overcome them? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we've had uh, we've had some of the normal challenges that that you would expect 
uh, from any startup. Uh, challenges like getting those first wins, that's always difficult. Uh, getting in the door uh, the first time and, and getting some of those key beachheads established. Uh, those are challenges that you would expect to have um, as, as a new company. Uh, and we've been able to overcome those. Uh, you run into new technical challenges. Um, of course, not everything goes exactly the way you would expect. Uh, you run into bugs. Uh, you have to go and fix the design, maybe in, hopefully in the pre-silicon phase. Um, and so seeing how the team reacts the first time that some of those technical challenges uh, come about has been, uh, has been a key learning experience. And I think that has really brought the team together more closely those times that you, you know, need to bring the team in for, you know, some of those late night sessions, weekends, you know, bringing, bring silicon up is never trivial. Um, and so, uh, you know, we've, we've experienced those, those kind of challenges that you would have expected. Um, maybe it's a little cliched now, obviously the last year has been um, a challenge that we didn't quite expect. Uh, we certainly couldn't have predicted a global pandemic uh, when, we, when we started. Um, now, luckily we were already very you know, globally distributed. Uh, we have seven different offices around the world. So we already were working around the clock amongst various teams, but certainly working remotely has been a challenge. Uh, but I think that it's one that's made us stronger as a company because we've learned how to um, be more responsive to each other. We've learned how to, I think, pay a little bit closer attention um, to people when, you know, when we're working remotely, um, paying attention to when people are, uh, you know, experiencing their own challenges. I think it's been a, uh, it's been a learning experience. Uh, for us as, as a company. Again, that's kind of one that we couldn't have predicted uh, in addition to the ones that, of course, any startup is going to experience. Yeah. Um, that's interesting, yeah. So um, thinking about our audience here today, you clearly have a lot of experience in the semiconductor industry. What do you see are some of the biggest opportunities for startups in the semiconductor yeah. space? Yeah, it, it really could not be a more exciting time in the uh, in the semiconductor space. This is another one where I think when when Ampere was started three and a half, four years ago, I don't think we could have ever predicted how exciting this space would actually be. You know, a couple of years ago, uh, mainstream media didn't want to write about semiconductors. Nobody really cared about what was happening. The VC community wasn't uh, particularly enamored with semiconductors. It just wasn't a hot area. There's a lot going on. Uh, but in the mainstream world, it, it wasn't what people were talking about. And that's completely changed. Every single day now, there's articles in Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, New York Times um, about new semiconductor startups. The world sees how critically important semiconductors are, um, having become even more dependent on them over the last year, year and a half. Um, and I think that from a technical perspective and an ecosystem perspective, there's never been a better time for this. Uh, and there's opportunities for new startups to develop products for new use cases that didn't exist before, uh, new markets that didn't even exist five and 10 years ago. Um, and the tools are all there, you know, whether it's uh, architectures like the, the ARM uh, architecture and ARM ISA, whether it's the availability of leading edge uh, process technology from fabs like TSMC. You know, the tools are all there for people to go and develop new products in a way that was never possible uh, even 10 years ago. So I think that the, the future of the semiconductor space is, is incredibly exciting. Uh, and there are massive opportunities for new startups to come in and, and capitalize on the, the current environment. Yeah, I'm interested to hear some of what the ideas they have and what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So for us at ARM, strong relationships have been crucial to our success and also that of our customers. And we're really proud of the diverse range of organizations we work with around the globe and the breadth and depth of those relationships. So how important has the ARM ecosystem been to Ampere as the company has grown over the last four years? The ecosystem is extraordinarily important. And when you look at the ecosystem, uh, it's everything from uh, software, starting at the firmware level, at the operating system, applications, and then all the way out into the ODM, OEM ecosystem, and the, the customer ecosystem as well. Um, so if we kind of start at the, at the bottom, you know, the 
firmware piece um, is extraordinarily important. Things that ARM's done, like the System Ready SR program, uh, these have been critical, right? For people to understand and know that when they get a ARM-based server, uh, like what we've developed for, at Ampere, to know that it can you know, seamlessly integrate into your infrastructure, that it's gonna work the way you expected, that operating systems are gonna work the way that you would expect them to work, you know, that, that's super important. Um, and so this broad ecosystem, whether it's uh, work that we've done at Ampere, whether it's work that ARM has done, whether it's the open source community, like the uh, Linux developers, uh, this has been crucial. Um, so there's the software piece of it, but then also um, bringing more ODMs and OEMs on board, uh, people who are actually building the servers around the, the CPU. You know, this has been critical uh, as well. You know, we have a couple of partners um, who have been working on ARM-based servers for a long time. Gigabyte, for instance, has done many generations of ARM-based servers. And then we have some partners that um, had never done an ARM server before. Um, Inspur over in China. Um, has has jumped on um, you know on the Ampere bandwagon, uh, and it's been great to see more and more people that were just never interested in anything that wasn't x86 before to see them jump on board and see that enthusiasm uh, is uh, is really really impressive, and then that then carries over into uh, our customers like cloud service providers, and then even their end customers. You know, I think every day on 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 Twitter or other social media. You know, I see a couple of new examples of developers that have you know, found Ampere instances or they're running ARM-based uh, applications somewhere out in the cloud. And it's been, uh, it's been fun to see how people are taking advantage of the, the technology and it just continues to blow up and grow. Great. Well, thank you, Jeff, for uh, chatting with us today. But before we finish this session, I'd love to know. If you were advising a young company in today's tech environment, what would be your three top tips to help them succeed? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the three top tips, uh, one we talked about a little bit before, one of them is focus. Uh, the second one is uh, being flexible and adaptable. Uh, and the third is you know, create the right culture. So if I look at those, you know, we, we talked a little bit before about, about focus, but it's really, really understanding why you exist, um, what is the, the key mission that you're trying to serve, and really making sure that's understood across the entire company. That's been, that's been really, um, really, really important at, at Ampere. And I think something that really differentiated Ampere for me from other places that, that I've been at, uh, where everyone at Ampere is very clear as to what the mission is. Everybody comes to work every day knowing that our goal is to create uh, the next generation of CPUs for cloud computing. Everybody is completely focused on that, on that task. And so again, knowing, knowing why uh, we exist as a, as a startup and as a company has been really important in keeping the entire uh, organization focused on the, on the end goal. Um, the second that I mentioned was uh, being adaptable and flexible. So the, the mission doesn't change, but the way you get there certainly can change over time. Uh, and so being flexible to adapt your tactics as you learn new information, as the market changes, um, th that's, that's also very, very important. That's gonna happen many, many times uh, through, a, through a startup's life that you learn something that you just didn't know at the beginning. Um, it doesn't mean that you were wrong. It might just mean that the market has changed, technology has changed, um, and so being adaptable, but without losing focus on why you why you uh, actually uh, set out at the beginning. And then the third is uh, you know creating the the right culture, um, and I think that is also one of the the big advantages and, and fun things about being in a startup is you get to create a company that works the way you want it to work, where people are rewarded the way that you want them to be rewarded, um, a place that can be fun, that people want to innovate at. Um, that's something that you just don't get an opportunity to do in an old established uh, organization. And, and that really, you have to establish that from the beginning, um, that, that right culture. And uh, so I think those, those are the three things that I would, uh, I guess, give out as, as advice is, you know, be focused, but be adaptable um, and, and do it all within the, the culture that, that you want to work in and that's going to make you successful as a startup. 
Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time here today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much.